All right, so I'm going to try to explain mitosis in the context of chromosomes because that's the most important way to understand them is with the phases and what's actually happening with the chromosomes. And I ended, I tried to help you guys out on Friday a little bit, and there's a couple of you that still need to explain mitosis to me, and hopefully you'll be able to do it by the end of the hour today. Um, the three main things ended with up. What were they? Chromosomes will will blank up. That's one of them. For, they will show up. They will line up and they will split up okay show up means that chromatin condenses into chromosomes okay let me zoom that way sorry uh, chromatin condensing I've heard it called chromatin also. It condenses into chromosomes. I could use one other word instead of condenses. Uh, shrinks down. That's true. It shrinks down. There was a word I used in class for that. Coils up? Yes, but there was something in front of the coils. Super coils. Uh huh. And that's why you see chromosomes. So that's why they show up. Is they're they're there the whole time. You just can't see them under a microscope because they're not wound up. Okay. Then they line up. Okay. They uh, make a single file line at the cells. <laughs> What? Think about this. If you were lining up at the middle line of the earth, what would you call that? The equator. <laughs> the equator. And that's the same thing that we call it in a cell. They line up some they call it some cells they or some books call it the equatorial plate. At the cells equator. Uh huh. Is this all that you yeah. Split up. Uh huh. Super coils. All right. Was it is it equator or equator? I feel like er. Is it er? I feel er. I said er. It's or. It's or. Okay. All right. All right. Now split up. What happens is chromatids separate. There is a rat and separate. Wait, what's the title of it? Can you just oh, read it? Phases. phases of mitosis explained. Chromatids separate, becoming chromosomes. They're only chromatids of a chromosome until they separate. When they separate, they're their own chromosome, becoming chromosomes. And move to opposite ends of cell. Okay. Now, we have phases and names. And it was IPMAT or IP more after T or I poop more after Thanksgiving. Okay. First was interphase Prophase, metaphase, metaphase, telophase. Okay, those were the phases. So let's take a look at each of these. Okay, interphase sometimes doesn't even really count. I, I don't know that I'd necessarily count it. This is most of a cell's life cycle here, okay? PMAT is actually mitosis. Okay. So prophase. I say that and I think of the Spanish teachers when I say prophase. All right. So prophase looks like this. 
<coughs> prophase show up okay you see the nuclear membrane but it's starting to break down there there's some things instead of calling that a nuclear membrane do you remember what they called it a nuclear give you a hint you stick a letter in it what is that word pointing to the arrow ah, says? Go back, I mean, oh. go back that, that. mitosis What's the yeah, these four are in mitosis. That one's not. Prophase. Chromosomes appear. And the nuclear envelope or membrane disappears okay so we have the chromosomes appear and the nuclear membrane or env sometimes called the envelope disappears after they show up then what they line up in what phase metaphase I get conflicting sources on this some say prophase is the longest phase some say that uh, metaphase is the longest phase so I'll need to do some research and find out which one's which okay <laughs> metaphase line up okay Chromosomes align at the cells equator. Spindle fibers attach to centromere. And what now? Okay, if you're going to throw up, grab the trash can. Okay. That way yeah, it's easier for everybody. All right. <laughs> Centromere. And did you guys catch the name of the other thing, what the spindle fibers attached to? Right here. Yeah. Spindle fibers attached to centromere. And chromosomes what? On the first one? Yeah. Chromosomes align at the cell's equator. A L I G N. Is that not right? Mr. Haley, is it true if you like let's say you drink something and it's really hot, can that damage your stomach in a way? Uh, if it's really, really hot, yeah, but typically you wouldn't get it down. If it's that hot, you'd probably spit it out. Yeah. Okay. All right. Centromere, and this is going to be a little bit confusing, so don't miss this. And centrioles. Let's talk about these center things, okay? Where is a centromere found? In the center. Of the what? Chromosome, right? Here's a centromere. Okay. Are you talking about the centrioles? Yeah. I'm going to draw those here in just a second. It is an organelle. It's got kind of this little spooly thing going on, on the outside like that. And you have them at opposite ends of the cell. These are complex protein structures. Proteins, like a boss. Okay. What's that C word? What's that C word, Mr. Here? This one? No, at the top with the bubble. With the bubble. Centromere. Here? Oh, centromere. Centromeres are at the center of the chrom uh, chromosomes. Okay, so watch this. These things that I just drew are what? Centrioles. 
Okay? That's, a, that's one centriole. The other one's at the other end. And these things attaching from the center of the chromosomes to the centrioles are called what? Look at this bullet point here. This and they're attaching to the spindle, the spindle fiber. Yes, indeed. That's a spindle fiber. Okay. So we're going to attach a spindle fiber to each end here. And what I understand is that these things start... I want to be careful with this word because it means something different to some of you all in this class. Ratchet. Ratchet is a word that some of y'all use for the word wretched. To ratchet actually is like a is like what you do with a, a socket wrench. It's a ratchet. It, it, it turns and cranks and locks and turns and cranks and locks. It goes one direction but not the other. These types of things will sort of spin and pull on these spindle fibers to pull apart the chromosomes and bring them to either end of the cell. So they're ratcheting down. Like a, like a ratchet strap, if you think about that. Like you put it on the back of a truck to hold you know, furniture or whatever you're hauling back there. You crank it down and it pulls it tighter. It's pulling these things tighter and pulling them apart from one another. So centrioles, centromere, and the spindle fibers attached to them. Okay, We're not quite ready to pull. We're going to pull right here at which phase? Anaphase. Anaphase. So we're going to go ahead and draw it here like this. Okay, got those guys here with their little fangs like that. And this time we're going to draw them already separated. This phase was called what again? Anaphase. That's the split up. Chromatids separate, forming two new chromosomes. Okay. So when it was together, when it was together back in this step, this whole thing was a chromosome and these little side pieces here were chromatids. Once they're pulled apart, that's a chromosome. Yes. Forming two new chromosomes. are pulled to opposite ends of the cell by centrioles and spindle fibers. not quite done yet because we don't quite have two new cells yet. So that's what we're going to show here next. What's the next phase? Telophase. I've heard it pronounced telophase as well. Either one's fine. Okay. I'm going to try to get this jammed into the VCR so it'll still stay in place maybe. Nope. Slide it underneath. Fold it in half. Hang on gang. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to try to keep you up there. Okay. Now this one we're going to see it already starting to put a dent in the middle like that.
What's that C word by bye bye? Centrioles. Mm hmm No problem. Last phase. Telephase. Ah, uh, spindle. Uh huh. Okay. So here, I I love to end it with ups because everything, everything else is a new cells. Up. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's not working great, but all right. So you can see new nuclear membrane forming. Cytoplasm begins to divide. Organelles divided. So there's there there has to be uh, some of each. Then there some mitochondria goes to one, some goes to the other. Endoplasmic reticulum to one, ribosomes to one to the other. They make sure they both have the stuff. Okay. And then to go from here to where they're both completely separate from one another. Scoot up now. You guys remember what the name of this word is? You may or may not have seen it. The, yeah, that's it. Cy whoa. Ciao. Cytokinesis. Excuse me. Cytokinesis is the process where the cells split apart. So that's the gist of it. They kind of do, like with mini bacon on top. Yeah. All right. Now, I wanna, I wanna talk about this concept, that words that end with ploid. Okay. All right. Normal body cells have two copies of every chromosome. So if I was to take a cell out of my fingertip here, and if I dig deep enough to find one that's alive, because your outer layers of cells are all dead, and if I was to able to isolate its chromosomes under the microscope, I would find two full copies of 23. Humans, we have 46 chromosomes. In humans, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. A total of how many? 46. We have 46 chromosomes in our cells. Okay, And what a chromosome is, is if we take all the DNA that we have in our, in our cells, they're basically cut up into... 20 or 46 different pieces, 23 pairs of those pieces because the some of them code for some stuff, some are longer, some are shorter than others. But if it's all one big strand, it's hard to read and so on and so forth. So it's divided up into smaller, smaller pieces for a total of 46. Okay, now. 
Yeah. <laughs> Cells that have two copies of chromosomes. And I know this is going to be on the EOC a lot of times. I'm not sure why, but like, it seems like they're always asking me, uh, why do they have so many questions about diploid and haploid? So I'm 100% sure that's on there, okay? Okay. Two copies of chromosomes are called diploid. Two copies of the chromosomes are called diploid. And if it helps to say diploid, di being what? Like two, right. Oh. <laughs> not like death. No, not death. Two chromosomes. Okay? So... Like I said, unless it's changed from last year. I just know this is a pretty big concept in biology also. So two copies of chromosomes are called dip, diploid or diploid, okay? Oh, sorry. Cells that have only one copy all chromosomes <laughs> are called haploid. Haploid. Okay. Just a couple more things to drop on here. Okay. Kay. Capital N it equals number of chromosomes. Okay. So, 2n is what? Two copies of the whole number of chromosomes you have. So that, what type of cell would that be? Um, a diploid. Yeah. 2N is the same thing as saying diploid or diploid. And N is the same thing as saying haploid. So think of haploid. Think of what now? Nothing. Oh, okay. Now, here's the thing that I want you to remember. These are only sex cells. You won't find haploid cells anywhere else in the human body or really in many <coughs> other organisms. Uh, unless they're sex cells. There's a reason. All other cells. <coughs> Only sex cells need to be haploid because when a sperm combines with an egg, each of them is bringing N. When they combine together, what do you end up with? Diploid. A diploid cell. You end up with, yeah, you end up with 2N. You end up with a cell that has a full set the two copies of chromosomes, okay? So, all right.